Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is fantastic and maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, there is something that I have been telling you on this platform. And allow me to repeat myself once again. That William Ruto is going to be a one-term president. And I know most of you guys have been asking me or challenging me about who is likely to remove William Ruto from office. William Ruto will be removed by the Gen Z's. Earlier today, there was some Twitter or X space. And it was fire there. And uh, let us not forget, Kipchumba you are, a, you are one of the most corrupt motherfuckers I know in this country. Na minister kutangana, bro. You, you, there are very, the number of people I know who have, who see potential in this country, investors wanna come, so wanna come. They want to set up uh, foundations in this country, but you better keep asking for kickbacks. That expense was being moderated by Osamo Otero. Let me just tell you how that expense was powerful. 1.2 million Kenyans tuned in to listen. At some point, over 70,000 Kenyans were tuned in live because I think it went for like seven hours. So at specific time, there were 70,000 people listening. I want you to visualize 17,000 people. 17,000 people can be equated to Kasarani Stadium when it's full. Do you remember the last time Kasarani Stadium was full? Kasarani Stadium, I think, has a capacity of 60,000. So that's how powerful that Twitter space was. And the agenda was simple. Good morning, Kenya. Where is Crazy Nairobian? Crazy Nairobian was arrested by the police following the demonstrations against the finance bill. Government of Kenya, led by none other than the president himself, was present. Listening. Kipjuna Rukomen was there. Aaron Cheruyot was there. Denis Itumbi was there, Isaac Moura was there, and of course you can be sure that there were other high-profile individuals who were there, incognito. President William Ruto was there very briefly, Kenyans were able to see him listening, then very briefly he also left. And Denis Itumbi, there's a screenshot where Denis Itumbi is uh, questioning the people who posted about William Ruto's presence there. But the truth of the matter is that all those people who are present, who are supportive of the government, were either shut down or those who are given time to speak, were given specific thing to talk about, the whereabouts of crazy Nairobian. But of course, most of those senior government officials, including William Ruto and Kepiba Murkomen, had to take off. So in this video, I want us to figure out why the Gen Z's were so harsh on William Ruto, why they kicked them out of the Twitter spaces. But before you do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, let us dive in. First of all, I want you guys to listen to the tone and the tune during the Twitter spaces. This is Amarex lecturing Kenya Kwanza leaders. Kijana kuna software engineering aende Saudi Arabia akwe get one. Afadhali ukijana akwe get one Kenya ajenge Kenya yake kuliko unamwambia tu tunakutafutia job huko Saudi Arabia. Mwache ya ujinga. And these young men, I want to tell you, Aaron Cheriot, umekuona hapa, watawatoa hapo. Wasipuatua leo, watawatoa. Mtatoka. You want to listen to them. The solution ni moja. Can you go back and tell Kimani Chungwa, the leader of majority, adore your bill, I withdraw your bill. Otherwise, mkendelea kupiga kifua, mna piga kifua, mna piga kifua, these young men will eat you. So that's number one. So sorry, I hope 
nitapata solution by by sasaba njua pili kama unanisikiza kama unaenda church kesho go and occupy those churches enda uka occupy your church usikayabu kama fala politician anaingia kwa podium ana watusi na mnapiga makofi ni wao mnakaaje how can a politician stand on a podium anaanza kuwa criticize na kuwa mock na mnapiga makofi ni wapi hiyo vitu politician anasema maandiko kwa hiyo bible stand up and tell them no kata jana tuliona watu walisimamisha KJ kule church utaenda kesho mimi siendangi church nenda church for the last four years but ile church utaenda kesho imama na useme hautaki then tafuta namba ya bishop wa kanisa yako because hao ndio wanakula pesa yako hao watu wa CDF na hiyo ngafi ya wamama women rep the most useless seat in Kenya au chukua pesa kila weekend na ku distribute kwa machaches mimi nasema hivi because i have been an advisor of politician kitambo au chukua pesa alafu kila weekend unapeleka kwa machache huyu politician amekuleta mwe eh, pastor bishop eh, eh, mp wetu amepeana 10000 utanunua simiti hiyo ni pesa ya wizi they are stealing your money and bribing churches no from that tone you can clearly feel the frustration on majority of kenyans and clearly these kenyans are determined and that's why i'm saying it's going to take a miracle for William Samoei Arap Ruto and the arrogance of his government to survive but the question which i want us to try and figure out in this question in this video is why do you think William Ruto Kepchiba Murkomen Denis Chutumbi and the group decided to join these twitter spaces number one why they decided is that they wanted to appear as if they are a listening government when Kepchiba Murkomen joined and he was invited to speak he kind of explained that he just wanted to listen to the views of Kenyans. It will be came listening. The rest came listening. So the truth is they wanted to project themselves as a government that listens to the views of Kenyans. The second reason why they joined this Twitter space was probably to gauge the mood. And indeed, they got the mood of Kenyans. Kenyans are angry and are bitter. In fact, if our William Ruto and our planned activities in the next week, I'd cancel all of them and focus on dealing with this issue because it's going to reach some boiling point. The third reason why they decided to join was probably to give their side of the story, which the moderators refused. And on that, I want to really thank Osamu Otero and whoever help team in uh, the moderation because the truth is these politicians have always been disregarding any opinion on this matter someone like uh, the personal assistant to <laughs> the president faruki bet had very unkind words towards this generation people like uh, the majority leader if you remember what they talked about what they said that this generation were caught at um, iPhones my twitter i mean my pizza you know those kind of things so it was just in order for them to be locked out but they wanted to give their side of the story and of course there is also something which made them join they wanted to instill fear that if you see kupimba more comment or if you see tumbi or if you see aron chariot probably you will not talk your mind because either they are your friends they are in government you know there's normally the fear but that fear is no longer there that is the honest truth but i want to give my personal opinion about the whole thing because sometimes it's good to advise politicians sometimes they don't listen i want to offer my unsolicited advice to william ruto mr president kenyans are not joking this time around majority of these young people are looking at you and they see you as someone who has failed them that is the honest truth so as you do all other things my conclusion about the old twitter space today 
is that number one, Kenya Kwanza government must know that they are dealing with a totally different group. This is not Raila Odinga, this is not ODM. Raila Odinga and ODM and the Manambanos or Azimio, they knew how to handle them. Because they knew these guys would come from this place, they would go here, throw tear gas, kill a few people, probably like that, send some foreign powers to go and talk to specific people, maybe Raila, use his, uh, his close friends. This group, it's not like that. Number one, this group are educated. If you listened to the kinds of debates, the kind of issues they were raising, they are smart. You can't compare them to Oscar Sudi. You can't compare them to Farouk Kibet. These guys know what they want. Secondly, this group, they can fund their political activities alone or they, are, they can organize themselves alone. I listened to the way they were organizing themselves. Should worry Kenya Kwanza. Let us look at it from this perspective. They are planned occupation of parliament on Tuesday. A group of lawyers are there and they've given out their numbers, well coordinated. That if one is arrested, these guys will rush very fast to defend them. They have a team of lawyers, I mean a team of doctors, who will be setting up spaces where they will be attending to the victims. So that if someone is injured, they have a temporary place. I think the Jumia, Jumia Mosque, I think they, are, they have also requested a few spaces where they will be offering first aid very fast before these guys are transferred. They even have ambulances ready. This group called for blood just in case. And according to data, which because data don't lie, the people who turned up and donated blood made history in the Republic of Kenya. Not a single day has ever this blood campaign never reached that level in a single day. Yeah? <laughs> and remember, this group, most of them have never benefited completely from the government. So there's nothing the government will tell them. They've gone to school. Some of them are, of course, the other important aspect is that they are also technologically savvy. So which means they are ahead of the government. If you are planning to block the internet, they know how to go about it. If you want to tap their phones, they know how to go about it. So this group will take William Ruto home if he's not careful. And because there's no clear leadership, you can't approach some of them. This generation is not like ours, for example, where people would push things, then when it reaches a point, they'll be approached, then they'll be paid. I doubt if this group is like this. Remember, this is a group who, before going for a demonstration, they record themselves while leaving home. They go, they organize themselves, they go to Java, they take that full breakfast. They take an Uber, go there. They have their backpacks fully loaded with water and the rest, even some first aid kits. And they're even willing to stay until the next day. Our generation, what used to happen? So, William Ruto, this group, be very careful. Arresting them will not help. Arresting this group will not help. Number two, it is also, it, number two, it is also very clear that the anger amongst Kenyans, especially this group, is boiling. And it's about to reach the boiling point. And no, it's not only boiling towards members of parliament, no, but it's also now boiling towards sympathizers of Kenya Kwanza, and particularly the executive. <laughs> I, you see, the reason why I'm posting this video late is because the whole day 
I was just listening to that Twitter space. My friends, the anger outside there, William Ruto should be warned. Number three, there is also the determination <laughs> to fight on. One of the questions which has always been there before is that it was possible to allow the demonstrators to demonstrate for two days and then people will wear out, go home. This group, the way they are organized, they can actually sustain, they can sustain that demonstration based the way they are organized because they are on Twitter, they are on TikTok, they are smart graphics. So even if they decide today we are not going to the streets, these guys are so innovative that they can come up with another strategy of protest and nothing will stop them. Remember, people like uh, Ndinti Nyoro, Kimani Shungwa were calling for some kind of generational change. Now a generation which is below them is the one now who wants to take over. So it means even them, they'll be swept. <laughs> Number number four in my view, and based on uh, what I gathered from uh, the tone on those speeches, it's like the government wanted to advance a narrative that this group is sponsored. So they want to prove to the government that indeed they are not sponsored, that they are doing their own thing. And that is the beauty of this group. In fact, I was talking to someone and he was telling me that Kenya Kwanza are really worried. Because they believe that this group and their activities is being sponsored by someone. And the intelligence has been unleashed to try and figure out this, the, the people who are sponsoring this group. And that's why most of uh, the Gen Cs who are being targeted, that's why the first thing they take from them is their phones to try and figure out who are the sponsored. Who are the sponsors? I'm told they are suspecting either Rigiji or Ailo Dinga or the civil society, but they can't link. Because this thing is just popping up on online. <laughs> and lastly, this finance bill should come down. William Ruto and the executive should figure out the best way to withdraw that bill. Either they strategically allow members of parliament to go and stop him, stop it from the second reading. Create maybe a quorum hitch or something like that. So that it fails, then they can bring a new bill. And that new bill probably they should consult or decide to continue with the finance bill 2023. 20, I don't know what to think, but that's my take. Until next time, this is Lima Queen. Bye bye.